Now, humility aside, I've failed at a lot of things in my life. The first thing I failed at, I actually uh, had the best job coming out of graduate school. I was going to work at a company. I got to wear a suit every day. I got to have stock options. I was going to be in charge of employee relations at this company here. I failed the management test, meaning that they didn't, have, they didn't think I had enough experience to be a manager in order to be a manager. And so the ironic part was the test was made by a bunch of biopsychologists. My friends from high school and one of my close uh, teachers from high school at my graduation at Georgia said, what are you getting your PhD in uh, industrial organizational psychology? So you failed a test that you are having a PhD in in order to make. I said, yeah, I did. Very humbling, very ironic. It's another thing I failed at a lot in my life up until recently. And, if you, uh, and every time I failed at it, I've always heard these five words. We're going to play Wheel of Fortune. Uh, you will, uh, I'm going to have you guess what five words I heard each and every time uh, that I heard that. So you ready? What are, what are the five words? It's not you. See, even you were there. It's not you, it's me. Now, if you think about it's not you, it's me, where is the spotlight on that? If, somebody's, if I'm dumping somebody, it's not on you, it's on me. And folks, we as humans, we have been geared to think about it's not you, it's me all the time. As, back when we were five, we thought about my skills, my talents, my abilities got me my first job. It got me great grades. All those things made me successful. When we become individual contributors, though, whether we are salespeople, uh, researchers, chemists, IT people, anybody, who, lawyers, doctors, nurses, anybody, the things that make them successful are about me, myself, and I. And that's what makes them successful. And that is the reason why transitioning into leadership is so difficult. And that is where my passion is. And we are failing these people because if you think about it, people who are leading for the first time, they are people who have been successful individual contributors and they are part of the biggest population of leaders right now. Frontline managers, entry level supervisors, first level managers. They have the biggest impact on customer satisfaction, employee engagement. They lead the majority of the workforce. They lead more people than any other people in the organization. They are your bench strength today. They are your next generation of leaders. And we are failing them because if you look at the numbers, 60% of people who are managing for the first time don't get anything in training development. It is the biggest psychological shift that you will ever make in your life, and we're not setting them up for success. We are setting them up for failure. And those small minority who actually do get training get way less than do middle-level managers or senior level, senior level executives. We need to help them. So that's what stirred my passion around helping them. This to me is the Mona Lisa. Uh, this is uh, uh, polynomial regression with response service analysis. Quant geeky researchers like me, this is, this is beautiful. And this is what we found in MLP. What, what this really means is you have to flip your mindset about things. We also looked at uh, MLP data and we found that there are four things that are, are skill gaps of these first-time managers. They need to focus more on their communication, their influence, leading teams, and developing others. You can see we've written so much to help these managers. We also looked at their challenges. We saw that the biggest challenge these first-time managers have is going for what I call BFF to boss. You were best friends one day and now you're the boss the next day. How do you make that transition? And folks, if we are not training them, we are setting them up for failure. We need to flip that perspective and think about how we can do that. So we all have to make a choice. I tell the first-time managers I train, the ones that I work with, you have a choice. Do you want to keep thinking about that phrase, it's not you, it's me, when you got broken up or when you break up with so many people, and keep that as your mantra for leading others? Or are you going to do something different? Are you going to flip it? Are you going to say, it's not about me anymore? It's not about my skills and my talents. It's my spotlight is going to be shining on you, the people that I lead, and the people that I serve. Now, the hard part, as I said before, it's not ingrained in us. I mean, look at sports. People who said, you know, I will never use drugs, I'll never use performance enhancing drugs to get the records and break everything, and they do, and as you can see, it literally does increase your head if you do use those PEDs. Those are before after pictures. But it's not just in sports either, it's in leadership. It's people like Ken Lay and Bernie Madoff. It's people like uh, Martha Stewart. It's people like Lance Armstrong who had that, it's not you, it's me attitude, and they never flipped it. And they've hurt so many lives in the process. So that's why I want people to think about what can you do, you can flip things. You can flip your script. The script of individual contributors is all about me, myself, and I. Flip it. These are the uh, six things through the research. Your mindset, your skill set, your relationships, your definition of work, your perspective, and your focus. Those are the six things you need to flip. You can do that. You can be successful. So what I hope you do, the failures that you have, I flipped into my passions. My failures led me here. My failures led me to the, the woman of my dreams who I married. And my failures have led me to the official title that Barrett Kohler we're going to have for my book coming out in September. Be the boss everyone wants to work for, a guide for new leaders. Look for it in September. Thank you. Yeah.